Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at a very useful tool called Spook. Now Spook is described by the developer as hard to explain what Spook is, but its experience in using it is best described as oddly familiar. Now if you can explain that to me, then please let me know in the comments. Well, it's not a Halloween light show controlled by Home Assistant, which is a shame as I was looking forward to that. But if you know of one, then please let us know in the comments. Now I asked ChatGPT what Spook add-on in Home Assistant was, and it told me that Spook is a fun add-on for Home Assistant that enhances your smart home experience. It helps you monitor and fix device issues, manage entities and zones dynamically, and play with advanced templating features. Overall, Spook gives you more control and a playful twist in your smart home setup. To give it some context, if you watch my video on Watchmen, link in the pop-up above, that gives you a report within Home Assistant specifically around devices and entity integrity, Spook now takes that to the next level with integrated icons, repair recommendations, and is fully integrated into Home Assistant, plus a lot more. So let's see if Spook helps or hinders your Home Assistant experience. Spook was written by Frank, who is one of the main developers for Home Assistant and has been working there full time since 2019. So Spook is not going anywhere and will continue to just get better and better as time goes on. Spook has its own web page with comprehensive documentation and it's a breeze to install. I'll link to this web page in the description. Now there are a few prerequisites that you'll need to have complied with before installing. You'll need Home Assistant 2024.4.0 or newer but check the documentation on the site to verify this hasn't changed. To check which version you are running, navigate to Settings, About. Make sure your core is newer than 2024.4.0. Also make sure that you can see the supervisor, as this means you can install add-ons. You'll also need hacks installed. If you don't, then watch the video in the pop-up above or in the description below and come back once installed. Now we are set to install Spook. To install Spook, navigate to Hacks in the left-hand menu. Search for and select Spook. Press the Download button in the bottom right-hand corner. Confirm the installation by pressing Download. Refresh your page and make sure that the Download button has disappeared to confirm if the download was successful. You'll notice that a number has appeared next to the Settings. Navigate to Settings. A message advising that a restart is required for Spook. Press Restart Required. A restart required confirmation message will appear. Press submit. Now press finish. When Home Assistant comes back, we'll need to add the corresponding integration. Navigate to Settings, Devices and Services. Press the Add Integration button in the bottom right hand corner. Search for and select Spook. A pop-up message will appear asking if you are sure you want to install. Press submit. You'll now be asked if you want to restart now or later. Select Restart now and press finish. Now the spooky fun begins. Once Home Assistant has restarted, let's go and look at the entities that are exposed with Spook. Search for Spook. Now press the three devices that have been added. You'll see listed Home Assistant, Home Assistant Cloud and Repairs. Select Home Assistant. You have controls to reload and restart. Reload will reload the YAML files and restart will restart Home Assistant. Then you get the diagnostics, which shows you statistics around your Home Assistant instance for such devices as buttons, automations, and areas, etc. Press the back arrow in the top left hand corner. Now select Home Assistant Cloud. In the configuration section, you can see if Alexa or Google Voice Assistant is activated and if reporting is active. As this is my test environment, it only has Alexa active. You can also see if the remote Nabucasa is active with a toggle to activate or deactivate if required. There are no diagnostics for this device. Press the back arrow in the top left hand corner. Select repairs. Here you can action ignore all or unignore all issues that Spook has found. Then you get statistics as to how many issues Spook has found. Now that's all well and good, but what issues has Spook found? Now remember this is my demo environment, so it will have issues, don't judge me. Navigate to settings, expand show all repairs if needed. Spook found 27 repairs. The top two with Withings and LG are related to integrations, which have moved from YAML based hacks integrations to the official Home Assistant integrations. These can be resolved by fully removing the old integration and reinstalling the new official integration. 
I'll do these off camera, but at least Spook found them. I'd totally forgotten about them. Next we get the robot icon, which relates to automations. Select the first issue for CarPlay AC. This brings up a description of the issue and the reference that this issue relates to an entity that is unknown called switch.air underscore conditioner. If I open another tab for Home Assistant and navigate to Settings, Devices and Services, Entities. And now if I search for switch.air, I can see that the entity has changed name to switch.air underscore air conditioning and not air conditioner, which is probably when I reinstalled the integration. If I switch back to the repair, press edit automation. Then I open the then do and then change the entity to the correct one, which is switch.air underscore air conditioning and delete the old one and press save. This issue has now been resolved and has disappeared from the repair list. Now let's look at another one, which is dashboards. This tells us that the following entities are unknown to Home Assistant and a long list of entities. Now this relates to the overview dashboard, which is a system default dashboard and cannot be edited with the UI. The issue is that over time entities have been added to the overview dashboard. And since this is not my default nor editable, they remain there even though these are orphaned entities and unknown to Home Assistant. To resolve this, scroll down. Press Edit Dashboard. Now press the three dots in the top right hand corner. Press Raw Editor Configuration. Highlight all the YAML code. And press Delete. Now press Save. And confirm with Delete. There are no negative effects of deleting this dashboard as Home Assistant will recreate it if needed. Our next type of issue are helper issues, which are blue circles with three dots. These usually relate to unknown entities in groups. I'll select one of these as an example. Spook tells me that the group has entities that are unknown to Home Assistant. Make a note of the group name and switch across to your other Home Assistant tab. Navigate to Settings, Devices and Services, Helpers. Search for the group name and select. Now press the cog in the top right hand corner and select Group Options. This will bring back all of the entities that are associated with the group. Now we can see the two entity names that are not known to Home Assistant. Delete these or replace them with the correct entities and press submit, press finish and update. Now switch back to your other Home Assistant tab to see if the issue has been resolved. The repair was effective and the issue has been resolved. And the final repair that we'll look at relates to scripts. Select a script. Spook tells us the script that has the issue and the entity that was unknown to Home Assistant. Press edit script. The entity that was unknown was remote.study underscore beam. Expanding out the sequence, I can see the entity that this issue relates to. In this case, I no longer use the broad link bean in my test environment. Check out the video for the link and link eHub in the pop-up above, which replaced my broad link products. So this script is actually redundant and can be removed. Press the three dots in the top right hand corner, press delete and confirm with delete. Scrolling down, we can now see the issue has been resolved and the repair has disappeared. Now these were just some sample issues, but you can see the power of Spook for identifying issues and guiding you through the resolution. Now Spook core extensions have a lot of functionality that we simply don't have time to go into here. Frank has been very busy, but check out the link for Spook documentation in the description below for more details. I'll run through all of these now, but categorize them so you are aware they exist but I'll leave it up to you as to how you use them. Maybe let us know in the comments. Navigate to Developer Tools in the left-hand menu. Select Actions, which is the old services menu. Search for Spook. Select the first one that comes up. Now highlight and copy the ghost icon from the end of the action. Press the clear X to the right of the field. Now paste in the ghost icon. This will bring up all the Spook actions that can be performed. Now a word of warning. Make sure that you take a backup before running any of these actions. It's better to be safe than sorry. Watch my video on the Home Assistant Backup for how you should be performing your backups. Link in the pop-up above and in the description below. Now for the vast majority of Spook action calls, they are very geeky and developer orientated, but there are some great action calls mixed in there. Let's run through them. First off, we have an import for blueprints via developer tool action. I'm not sure on why you would need this. Personally, I like to take control of how I bring imports into Home Assistant, but it's nice to know it's there. 
Then you have many actions relating to adding, removing, changing various components associated with floors, areas and labels. Again, a very developer orientated list of actions. Then you can list or delete all orphaned entities. Now if deleting, read the warning about the integration first. But as long as you have restarted Home Assistant recently to identify these orphan entities, you should be fine. Also make sure that all your integrations should be active so the entities are referenced. This might be a sledgehammer to crack a nut and you might be better running through the issues individually to understand what entities will be deleted. Then you can enable or disable polling updates. Next, you can set an action relating to enabling, disabling or hiding devices, entities or integrations. Then come some actual useful actions. A random option picker, shuffle, sort and increase or decrease numbers. Expect these to be included into the Home Assistant core shortly. Then there are two actions for adding and removing device trackers and a geek's fantasy for importing statistics. Then you get some repair manipulation actions and the ability to set a timer duration, which will be very useful. Again, expect this to be in the Home Assistant core shortly, followed by some zone manipulation actions. And finally, two bizarre actions, one that always fails and another one that fails randomly. To the developers out there, please let me know what you use this for. Now Spook does so much more, we didn't get a chance to go into it. But if you focus on cleaning your home assistant and repairing all issues identified, then you'll have a robust and quick system. The additional features are more focused at advanced users or developers that need very specific functionality in my opinion. And for those actions that are actually useful, expect those to be moved to Home Assistant Core very shortly. And finally, if you do know of a good Halloween light integration, then please let us know in the comments as I'd love to show you all how to implement this. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, then hit that like button, comment and share. And if you want to access to similar material, then subscribe or maybe become a member and get early access to material plus other perks. And if I've helped you clean up your home assistant, then maybe a super thanks or a PayPal donation. It's really appreciated.